I kind of settled into failure analysis. And so I run the SEM, the scanning electron microscope, and the ESCA, uh, which is um, electron spectroscopy for chemical analysis, which is essentially surface, surface analysis. And so we use those tools, the various microscopes that we have, which we have lots of different kinds, to figure out problems. Uh, someone may, they may have broken something and we'll tell them why, really. So it's, it's fun, it's like figuring out a puzzle. It's like the boring nerd version of CSI. It's fun figuring out the big puzzles where you have lots of different pieces, and, but normally when you have those, somebody had a bad day. When I was coming out of Selma High School, um, I was interested in engineering and I was looking for an engineering major. Um, I had been involved in drafting at Selma High School and also did a little welding at Selma High School. So when I talked to a lot of the, the different departments at the University of Alabama, metallurgy struck me as the one that was most interesting. I never thought that I would work for NASA. I never did. Um, I did, however, take a rocket class in the sixth grade, which was pretty interesting. And I was so hurt because uh, during that class, during that school year, we had the opportunity to go see a shuttle flight. And my whole class went and I wasn't able to go because I got in trouble. I can't even remember what I did, but <laughs> no, I couldn't go. <laughs> so It did get to see a shuttle flight last year. Instead of going to the to the NASA site, I went to the causeway with a lot of the tourists and the fans. And I tried not to tell them I worked for NASA, but it kind of came out and you became a superstar out there. And it was, um, it was uh, a great experience because you don't expect to see the things that you, the things that you see. Um, for example, you watch, you're watching the shuttle go up and a few seconds later, you hear the sound and it's loud. And you're like, wow, I didn't expect that, you know. And it's so far away, but you're so close. You're a couple miles away. And you're looking through your binoculars trying to follow it and see it as far as you can see. And um, I remember from, from being that far away that the week before I got to go on the launch pad to see the shuttle. And I stood right beside one of the solid rocket boosters and I realized how small I was in comparison to the shuttle. And then uh, seeing it go up, you're realizing, you're thinking that it's, it's a huge feat to get all of that mass off the ground that fast. And it's a really humbling experience. You know, I was always the nerd in the family. So, uh, but I have an aunt that she tells everybody. I have a nephew that works for NASA and I'm like, it's no big deal. You know, there's, there's thousands of people that work for NASA. I'm not special, you know. I have a friend in, that I grew up with that teaches math at Meridianville Middle School, and he asked me to come speak to his classroom. And so I didn't want to go empty-handed, so I, I brought the coolest thing that I could possibly bring with me. I brought some liquid nitrogen and some racquetballs. And I talked to him about how material properties change with temperature. And so we froze a couple racquetballs and broke them. And it was really fun. I, I kept all the kids away from the nitrogen. It was pretty safe, but they had a blast just seeing how, because um, they that's the first time they had seen it up close. You know, YouTube, you can see it anywhere. But uh, it was pretty fun. I think they learned a lot. They're really nice kids. I want to at least accomplish something, you know, that I, we started um, at a period where we had a blank slate and we could innovate and we could move technology to a level that it hasn't been before. And I want to say I was a part of that. Just like the, a lot of the gray beards around here can say, we put, we put a man on the moon. <laughs> <laughs>